Hey everybody, this is Kennedy Hawk from the Marvel Champions Monthly Fan Podcast team. Here we are with another encounter strategy guide, this time all about Infiltrate the Museum, which is the second scenario in the Galaxy's Most Wanted campaign expansion. So if you have not played that campaign expansion yet and you want to have that experience raw without hearing my tips and tricks ahead of time, go ahead and hit the pause button right now. Go play the campaign, come back later, and see all my tips and tricks. Tell me how they're all wrong in the comments below, or ones that you think might be more helpful to people that um, they could benefit from. So, this is my hazardous materials ahead warning. I know some people don't want to see encounter card spoilers until after they've played the encounter, so this is your last chance to hit that pause button in 3, 2, 1, and here we go. So, we are talking all about... The Collector, he has the trait Elder, and his first encounter is Infiltrate the Museum. So we're going to talk about the encounter hook, the villain and main scheme breakdown, what the villain does, what the main scheme wants you to do, and how the scenario functions as a whole. We'll talk about the encounter breakdown, how many treacheries there are versus side schemes versus minions and boost abilities and things like that. Then we'll do a detailed dive into each of the modular sets that are recommended that you mix in with the Collector, as, lo as well as talking about how the collection and the scenario functions as a whole. We'll talk about the differences when you up yourself from Standard to Expert mode, and we have an extra slide today on the Campaign mode, talking about the Campaign size scheme that we left out in our Drang video. And also, now that you've defeated Drang and made some Mula Mula, maybe you want to spend that on some Market cards to help you defeat the Collector, who's one of those scenarios that people have really been griping about. We'll wrap up just recapping those tips and tricks, and invite the community to share their tips and tricks against the Collector in against the collection, against the collector in the comments below. So let's get to that encounter hook. So the encounter hook, um, the grand collection, creates the collection game area. See insert for details. Put the top card of each player's deck into the collection. This is before you draw your hand. So what the collection is, is it's going to be an assortment of cards, player cards, encounter cards, or all sorts of cards. And if we look at the main scheme down there, if there are at least five cards in the collection, players lose the game. So it is an alternate loss condition for the heroes. Not an alternate win condition. An alternate loss condition for the heroes. Maybe an alternate win condition for the collector. So he's forming a collection. He's stealing my stuff. I hate losing my stuff. That's why I hate Ultron. And it makes you want to punch the collector more than any other villain you faced. So... It's a very good hook to get you to want to attack the villain, which can be very frustrating at times, but also can be very rewarding when you finally beat it and school the collector in his own game. We'll talk about how you do that here in a minute. So let's look at that uh, villain and that main scheme again. So the collector reads, Forced Interrupt. When a player or encounter card will be placed into a discard pile from play, put it face up in the, to the collection instead. So this means when you discard something from uses, or when an ally is fully defeated and goes to your discard pile. This means it doesn't mean when you play an event um, and things like that. So events are going to be very strong against the collector. That's one obvious thing right up front. Some things you might not have thought of, this means when you defeat a side scheme, it could go to the collection. This means when you defeat a minion, it could go to the collection. So you're going to have to balance keeping those things out of there and letting them go to the collection. Because obviously in solo, if five cards go there, you lose. It's very hard to go through a game of Marvel Champions without expending five allies or uses cards. So it can be very quick to get to those five cards, especially since you start with one in there. Next, let's look at Collector 2. In Collector 2, in player order, each player must choose to either put the top card of their deck face up in the collection or take three damage. I'm going to tell you right now, always take three damage. Whether you're starting an expert or you are going down to one health that are going to have to heal... Anything you can do to avoid putting cards in the collection, especially more than one card per turn, is going to be essential. And that's because of the hero action on the Grand Collection. So each player can take this action once per round. Hero action. Choose to either exhaust your hero or spend two resources of any type. Discard one card from the collection. So it would go to its owner's discard pile. So if you discard a minion, it's going to go to the collector's discard pile, but why would you ever do that? You'd probably rather discard a player card so that it's not controlled by the collector, if that makes sense. So because you can only do that once per player per round, if you're in a solo game, you can only remove one card from the collection per round. So if you put two there in a round, you're now set back a turn where you have to try to put zero in the next round to catch up and keep that collection empty, which is really hard. The main scheme threat is pretty low um, at 10 and starting with four per player. It only goes up by one. So unlike Drang, you're not getting a ton of threat placed on the scheme, but you can see from the collector's base two and three scheme, Lots of threat is going to be placed on the scheme, and we're going to have to find ways to avoid it. So that is how the collection functions when you discard things or when the encounter deck discards things. Not treacheries, not events, things that are in play. They're going to go to the collection, and then you've got to remove them from the collection to make sure that you don't lose. 
We can see a little spoiler for a few scenarios later with Nebula in the art here, so that's kind of cool. All right, let's do the encounter breakdown. So you're supposed to include the cards from Infiltrate the Museum. The recommended modular set is Mena Menagerie Medley, and then Galactic Artifacts is kind of required, along with Standard. So we're just going to talk about Standard on this slide. Um, and there's there's actually not an environment in uh, Menagerie Medley. That is a typo. Sorry about that. But it's okay, because uh, it's not going to affect it too much. But the total number of minions is 10. That's a lot of minions, because we know those minions go to the collection. Treacheries is 14. So Treacheries is the most treacherous thing we're going to see. There are four side schemes. You're going to find out here in a minute that those side schemes won't go to the collection from Galactic Artifacts. But if you swapped out Menagerie Medley for Legions of Hydra, because he collected the Hydra or something, then those side schemes would go to the collections. You've got to be a little bit careful there. There, <coughs> excuse me, there are a lot of attachments, six attachments in total. And those attachments, when they're discarded, can go to the collection. So there's a total of 16 cards from his deck that when you defeat them or discard them, they go to the collection. And on top of that, a lot of his treachery cards are going to force cards from your hand and deck into the collection. So there's lots of ways that he can force you to do things. The average boost icon number is fairly low. Um, so just from Infiltrate the Museum, you've got one three boost, two two boost. Everything else is one or zero. In Galactic Artifacts, you've got one three and three twos. Um, so only two threes and six twos total. But that's, again, just like Drang, very misleading. So the Menagerie Medley set has no cards with any boost icons on it. But I believe it has, it's either six or seven of the nine cards have a boost ability that basically does damage to you or places threat in the main scheme. So don't be fooled into thinking that the boost icons are super low. They are low as far as needing your defense to defend things. But like you can see down here, you put things into play when there are boosts, then that thing will also attack you or scheme against you. They'll deal one damage to each character you control, so that can wipe out allies that you've been keeping with one health. So you got to be a little bit careful. And there's even boosts that take things and put them in the collection. So he's he's doing it all. All right, so things that go into the collection. Let's just overview this again. It's whenever you discard something that goes to a discard pile. So when you defeat a minion, that minion's going to the collection. When you defeat a side scheme, that side schemes go into the collection, sort of. Like I said, the ones that we just talked about in that last table are not, but normal side schemes would. When an ally is defeated, whether from damage or consequential, go into the collection. Uh, preparations from Black Widow, right? You discard the preparation to do the effect, go into the collection. Rocket, you discard tech upgrades to draw cards, go into the collection. Cards with uses, you run out of tokens on them, energy barriers, go into the collection. So all those things that are normally really like fun to play and well thought out are going to hurt you in this scenario. Widow really has a hard time you pretty much use her signature set as resources and just play with those 25 aspect cards. Um, cards can be discarded from treachery cards and other card effects. So let's look at four of the card effects from the Infiltrate the Museum set, which was actually a pretty small set. It's only got 13 cards total. One of them is the main scheme. Three are the villains. So there's not a ton of cards in there. There's one copy of this biogram image. Um, basically, it's an attachment that goes onto the collector. When he would take any amount of damage, you put this card into the collection um, the, this attachment into the collection. You prevent all the damage and then place threat in the main scheme equal to the damage prevented. So when you see that out there, you're going to want to ping him for one. So like Squirrel Girl, Stinger, Black Widow's like little thingamabob, stingy thing. Anything you can do to damage that for one is going to be the best you can do because you don't want to place a ton of threat in that scheme because it's only got 10 per player as its limit. View the cosmos. Choose one. Put the highest cost card from your hand face up into the collection. Okay, so that's not so bad, right? You're just putting a high cost card into the collection. It doesn't cost you any extra to remove it just because it's high cost. It's still just an exhaust of two resources to remove it, but it takes a card out of your hand. Um, the other option is discard the highest cost card from your hand, then place threat in the main scheme equal to its printed cost. I almost never choose that option because if you have like a four cost card in your hand and you're putting a four threat in the main scheme from a treachery card, that is brutal. At the same time, if the collection's already at three, if it's, obviously if it's at four, if you put one more in on solo, you're losing the game. So you got to be really careful with how you make that decision. Um, caught off guard. He's got a copy of caught off guard in his set. So you're going to have two caught off guards in the deck that are going to discard an upgrade or support you control. So one way you can avoid that is just not playing upgrades and supports. But at the same time, you don't want to be playing allies and you can't have a deck of just 25 events. It's going to be very inefficient. So... You're going to get caught off guard, be prepared for it, have some expendable 
upgrades that were cheap to play that you don't care if they go away, some honorary Avengers or Endurances or downtimes, whatever you want to call them. Um, and because of that, he's got another card that will discard those. So he has Inconspicuous Box. I love the theme of this card. You just walk up to this box and you're like, hey, what's in there? And then something jumps out at you and it puts the lowest cost card you control face up into the collection. If you cannot, this card gains Surge. So it's basically caught off guard, but it can also hit allies. Um, it can take Hawkeye's Bow, which makes me very angry. It can take Hawkeye's Quiver, which also makes me very angry if there's arrows attached to it, because then a bunch of things go to the collection. And it's the one with that nasty boost ability that if you're... Basically, if you're winning the game, here's a way to make it worse. <laughs> so it's it's pretty brutal. So the last tip about things that go into the collection is things that have victory do not go to the collection. Things only go to the collection when they're going to a discard pile. When you defeat something with victory, like the campaign side scheme, the Badood Hen Hunter, or some of the cards we're going to talk about in upcoming slides, they go to the victory display, not to the discard pile. So when you defeat something with victory, don't make it harder on yourself. Don't put it in the collection. So, obviously, five per player cards in the collection, you'll lose. So, how do we avoid this alternative loss condition? What do we need to do with our deck building or our playing to avoid that? And there's a couple things that players can do to avoid this. So, I've got five tips listed here, and there's a lot more. So, if you have tips, put them in the comments. I will add them as subtitles or something. People are really struggling with this scenario, and we need to rally as a community, as a bunch of heroes, to figure out how to defeat this. So first thing, don't chump with allies. Everyone chumps with allies in every scenario ever because it is the most effective strategy for not taking damage. You can't do that here. Um, you can chump with allies in a pinch. If the collection's really low, you can probably ch chump with an ally. If uh, if you're going to die if you don't or if you're going to threat out or something, you, you better chump with an ally if you need to, if you're going to th threat out by having to flip down or recover. Um, but at the same time, like you have to be really careful with that decision about the chump chumping with allies. So one way to avoid that is if you still want to defend with allies, there's a lot of allies with a ton of hit points. So US Agent, Hulk, and Brawn all have five hit points. Those are some big, beefy allies. I mean, the collector's attack was pretty low. I believe it was one and then two. Even with a three damage boost card, Hulk's going to be able to soak two of those attacks instead of just one to chump as an ally. So that can be really, really important. Um, so high health allies, you can even put a bunch of honorary Avengers on your allies if you're playing as an Avenger character, right? You can get um, Hulk up to eight hit points, then he can probably soak two attacks, and you could even play first aid to heal him up so he can keep soaking those attacks for you. First aid is an event, Hulk is not, so that's another way to keep defending with those allies without having to discard them. At the same time, that's a lot of resource investment just for defending and not progressing your win conditions. So you got to be a little bit careful with how you're doing it. My favorite is with US Agent. I'll play him, get three honorary Avengers on him so he's up to eight, maybe get a reinforced suit on him so he's up to ten, and then I'll just keep first aiding him all game, slowly pinging away at defeating the villain, while also keeping me from having to flip down to alter ego. Um, so... Look for those high health allies, especially cheap ones. They're going to be really important. Be a little bit careful with that honorary Avenger strategy because if those treacheries come up, like caught off guard and conspicuous box, then you might end up discarding those honorary Avengers. And if you discard it and then also have to discard the ally because they are now defeated, that can just be a game swinging defeat. So you have to be a little bit careful. It's a little bit of risk reward there. Tip number two, play events, but they still need to be effective events. You can't play, like, you can play some bad events. I have at least one bad event in the row below this. But you can't be playing Uppercut. It's not going to help you win the game. But you can be playing other events that are effective or that do the things you need to do, right? So focus on events and events that are quality events and it will pay off in dividends. If you just shove 25 events in your deck, 25 haymakers, emergencies and whatever, you're going to struggle because um, he's still going to discard things from your hero kit or you're just not going to have what you need to get to the end. So play events but make sure they're effective events. And I'll talk about some of those below. Um, tip three, maintain minions and side schemes and allies, really. Don't defeat them. And what I mean by this is if a minion comes out, the natural inclination from the player is minion came out, let me punch it in the face and get it out of there so it doesn't ping me and thwart against me every turn. You can't do that with every minion that comes out. There were nine minions in that uh, Menagerie Medley. So you're going to see a ton of minions, and if you defeat them all, the collection is just going to get overloaded. So you've got to find ways to let those minions stay on the board without just completely being devastated by them. So... 
There's two cards here in the bottom right that can help with that, but I'm sure there's a ton of other ones. Like, you could use those big health allies, right? Hulk can block a two-damage minion with three honorary adventures four times before he's defeated. That's four turns you don't have to defeat that minion. That's four more turns that you get to empty the collection so that you have room for that minion to go there. Um... So Spider Girl, she's great, right? You put her out there, it stuns and confuses a minion. Amazing, because that gives you two turns of not worrying about that minion, which is two turns, like I said, to empty the collection. Pheromones, you can tactically target a minion with pheromones. I don't recommend that. What I would say is with Spider Woman, hit the villain with pheromones, and then just allow the minion to hit you, because the villain is not hitting you and is not scheming against you. So the, the minion, who probably has lower stats than the villain, becomes sort of like the villain for the turn. Um, and then you're just living a normal turn, but the villain has been stunned and confused. So things like that. Um, with side schemes, you're going to have to deal with their their icons. Hopefully it's not a crisis icon, because those ones just have to go away. But you're going to be defeating minions and side schemes. So try to not defeat them, or try to stretch it out, and get that collection really empty or low, so that you can defeat them and have lots of breathing room. Because if you end up defeating a minion, and then the villain hits one of your allies and kills it, and then you get caught off guard. Within one turn, that's three things that went to the collection. And you're only allowed five per player, so you've lost like 60% of your wiggle room, which is bad. Tip number four, stun and confuse the collector. Again, pheromones, just throw stun and confuse on the collector as much as possible, especially stun. Like, the threshold on the threat is low, but if you can stay in hero form, then you can deal with the threat and just not be attacked by the Collector, and that's going to mean you don't have to chump block and ex expend allies, he doesn't get those boost cards that can destroy your board state that we talked about on the table page, so stunning and confusing, very key. There's no stalwart or anything in this setup, so you don't have to worry about that. And finally, burn him down fast. His hit points aren't that high. I'm going to jump back up again. So it's 13 plus 14 in standard mode. 27 hit points isn't anything to sneeze at, but at the same time, 27 hit points is really low. You can defeat him in two to three turns if you have really, really good draws. Maybe four turns. I mean, I've done it three turns with Hawkeye Aggression a couple times now. I've not done it in two yet, but I'm confident that you could with characters like Captain Marvel and Hulk. So if you can burn him fast without discarding stuff, just go for it. Um, but be careful when you flip him, right? You know you're going to take that three damage or put a card in the collection. And uh, when we talk about expert mode here soon, something even worse happens in phase three. So just, just be prepared. So these cards I have in the bottom row, there are other ways to make your allies still effective. So I think if you're going to include allies in your deck, which you still should, you need to have a strategy that when that ally gets low in health, you can keep that ally around for a few turns, but not have them be a wasted resource. So let's say you play Spider Girl and you attack the Collector with her once. She stuns and confuses a minion. You don't want to attack with her or chump block with her right away, because you need to empty the collection and maintain low card count there. But if you have three copies of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, now Spider Girl can allow you to remove one card from the collection a turn. You're still capped at one, but you can use your hero activation as an attack or thwart, then ready your hero with Earth Mightiest Heroes and use that second activation to empty the collection. So use them as batteries for things like that. Use them for strength and numbers to draw a bunch of cards. Or even like with uh, Giant Man, if you have him out there, he's got a ton of HP. You can get him really high in health, but once he gets below his threshold or you're not confident in leaving him at any lower health, you can start using teamwork with him and just adding his stats to yours to accelerate the game through the use of an event. Um, obviously, Betty for Action is going to let you chump with those allies without having them discarded. So again, a very good card. So find ways to use your allies without discarding them. And that's what that bottom row of cards is about, because it's going to be key to defeating the Collector. All right, so I talked about like using allies to really low health. This slide is going to tell you why you shouldn't do that. So this is the Menagerie Medley Overview. There are three card types in here. There are Psionic Ghosts, which are a pain. There are Star Sharks, which are a pain. And there are Servant Bots, which are also you know a pain. So Psionic Ghosts, two scheme, two attack, four health, minion. When revealed, you are confused. If you are already confused, take a damage. Great. Um, the key here is that they come into play on boost as well, but they are put into play. They are not revealed when you put them into play as a boost. So you don't have to resolve that when revealed ability when they enter play with you as a boost icon. At the same time, if the villain is attacking you for their initial attack and they boost a cyanic ghost, that ghost is going to punch you for two right away. So it's actually like a two two icon boost card, whether it's attacking or scheming, unless this comes from like a gang up or an assault or an advance, which is bad enough. Um, at the same time, 
this is a really good target for Spider Girl, right? Because this thing comes into play, you stun and confuse it, that lets you spend one more turn in hero form, one turn in alter ego form before you have to deal with the ghost. All right, next up is Star Shark, and there are also multiple Star Sharks. I think there's, I think it's four ghosts, three Star Sharks, and two Serpent Bots, but my numbers might be a little bit off. Um, Star Shark has another really nasty boost effect. Deal one damage to each character you control. So if you try to get the most out of your allies and put them all to one health and then start using them for strength and numbers and things like that, one Star Shark could wipe out three to six allies in your board and just lose the game for you. So you can't really leave your allies at one health reliably unless you know where all those Star Sharks are. So be really careful about that. When they come into play, they have Quick Strike. They do deal indirect damage, so you can spread that out amongst the things you would like. Most of the time, I place all of that on my hero still because I don't want to put extra damage on my allies because it puts them closer closer to being discarded. If my hero is discarded, I've just lost, so it doesn't matter at that point. But if I discard an ally and lose to the collection, that's something I could have prevented. Another great target for Spider Girl, they have seven health, so if you're putting seven damage into the Star Shark to advance the the villain's win condition, that feels really bad, right? Because the, the villain only had 27 health to begin with. If you defeat three Star Sharks, that's 21 of the damage you could have just punched the Collector with. So a great target for Stun and Confuse. Next up is Servant Bot. One attack, one scheme, three health. Who cares? Oh, he's got guard and patrol. Patrol is a new keyword that while this minion is engaged with you, you cannot thwart the main scheme. And that includes your allies. So there's going to be very limited ways that you can stop threat from going on that single stage scheme. You can't really afford to let this guy sit out there because you can't attack the villain while he's engaged with you. So you're probably going to have to defeat him. So when he comes out, you immediately need to empty the collection and get rid of him. Um, no boost effect, at least. So that's kind of nice. Note this is a nine-card set. It's a really big set. It's all minions. It can really shape the encounter by swapping out this set. So if you're struggling with this set, maybe swap it out for Bomb Scare. There's still some confusion in there like the Psionic Ghosts. There's a side scheme and two minions that can be defeated, but there's not nine cards that go to the collection, like in this one. Um, at the same time, like that's sort of the theme, is there's a lot of things that are struggling to go in the collection, so you might want to swap this for a minion-heavy encounter like Masters of Evil or something like that. So I think that uh, this set is pretty fun, but it can be really brutal, especially with this collector setup. All right, the other set, and this is the one you have to include, is Galactic Artifacts. So Galactic Artifacts is another nine-card encounter set. There are five attachments. I have two here that are a real pain in the butt. Cloak of Hercules and the Poison. So this attaches to the enemy with the lowest attack. That's a real pain when it attaches to a Servant Bot. Because as a hero action, you can spend three physical resources to discard this card. Or you can just defeat the Servant Bot. But if you defeat a minion that has an attachment on them, you're putting two things into the discard pile or two things into the collection, which is... A Pain in the butt. Um, another one of the attachment artifacts that has been just a royal pain to me is the poison. A lot of times, like I said, I'm putting that indirect damage on me. I'm keeping my allies alive. Um, well, this card comes out, and it's going to deal a damage to you at the start of your turn. When your turn begins, place a poison counter here. Then take one damage for each poison counter here. So that first turn, if you've left yourself at 1 HP and you're an alter ego, you're getting killed at the start of your turn, and there's nothing you can do about it. So it's brutal. Um, and if you don't have the resources of different types to get rid of it, that next turn you're going to take two. It's going to require a lot of healing if you wanted to maintain this instead of throwing it in the collection. Um, there are four side schemes you can see here. They all have three base threat plus hinder two. So in solo, they're going to start at five, and they all have victory zero. So while they're not going to get you units at the end of this scenario, they are not going to go to the, the discard pile when defeated, which is really good. And they all offer a boon when you defeat them. So magical teapot, when you defeat this, you heal your identity for four, so that can help you avoid going to alter ego. Um, you may ready your identity, so that can actually let you remove a card from the collection if you've run out of exhaustion for the turn. Crystal Ball is going to let you play an expensive card from hand. Um, and Philosopher's Stone is going to let you um, draw two cards. One cool thing with Crystal Ball and Multiplayer is the player who defeated the side scheme may play a card from their hand, reducing its resource cost by three. So if you defeat that with an event like Four Justice out of turn, you get to play a card out of turn as well. can be really cool, so that's like a sneaky thing you can do there. Just a little bit sneaky. Um, you do have to play it right away. So if you're in alter ego form as She-Hulk and you thwart Crystal Ball away, you can't play, you know, Gamma Slam or whatever from your hand because you don't have time to flip to hero form. So just a reminder, victory does not go to the collection. I've said it a lot. I'm going to say it again, I'm sure. So that is Galactic Artifacts. It's a fun set, but it is kind of a pain in the butt set too. All right. 
going on to the expert upgrade. So what happens when you go from standard mode to expert mode? Well, first of all, the hit points in standard mode is 27. We're going up to 32 in expert mode, so that's a lot more. You're going to have to do this when revealed ability on the collector too right away. So you're starting off three hit points lower. You should never start with two cards in the collection. Just do not do it. Um, his other ability is the same for now, but he does increase both stats, two to three and then one to two. So that's pretty brutal. Typically before this, villains have gone up in one stat, not often in two stats. So that's something that we have to prepare for here a little bit. Um, Collector 3 has a horrible one revealed ability. Put the top card of each player's deck face up into the collection. Place one threat in the main scheme for each card in the collection. So let's say you're at 16 cards in the collection on a four player game then. You're placing 16 threat in the main scheme. Even in a solo game, let's say you had three cards in the collection. You flip the collector, you put your fourth one in there. That's putting almost half the threat allowance onto the main scheme. So you cannot flip to stage three unless you know how many cards are in the collection and you know you have margin on the main scheme or you've just lost the game. In addition, if that wasn't bad enough, when a card would be placed into a discard pile from play, put it face up into the collection instead, then place one threat on the main scheme. So now every time a card goes to the collection, he's also getting a threat placed on the main scheme dead like you need to flip to this and kill the collector instantly he can't linger he can't sit around you just need to get rid of him um so you're you're gonna struggle when you flip to phase three you need to be ready to burn him um i would also like to point out that that forced interruptibility doesn't interact with his when revealed his when revealed doesn't put anything into the discard pile it just takes something directly to the collection you're only going to place threat when something would go to the discard pile. So those treachery cards that are just like, place a card into the collection. They don't trigger his forced interrupt. That's only when a card would be discarded from play. So that's when allies are going away and minions and things like that. So a little bit of breathing room, but not a ton. Um, you're really going to have to hit the floor running and then build your board and get ready to just burn him in phase three. And that's how I've had the most success defeating expert collector. All right, so let's talk campaign mode a little bit. So there's a new addition in campaign mode that I skipped over in the Brotherhood of the Badoon. And there are campaign side schemes. So whether you're playing on standard or expert, there's going to be a side scheme that starts in play. So the one here in standard has three threat plus three per player. So in a four-player game, that's 15 threat. That's a lot. It has victory one, so it's going to give everybody a unit at the end of the game. But when it's defeated, you place the top card of each player's deck face up in the collection. There's nothing you can do to avoid that, because as soon as your deck is empty, you reshuffle and form a new deck. So if you're going to defeat this, you're going to be placing up to four cards in the collection, four player. Um, the expert one actually has a little bit of gaming you can do. It does have more threat, so it's four plus four per player, so eight in solo, or I guess that's 20 in, in four player. Victory one again. When defeated, each player must, quote, must, place one card at random from their hand face up into the collection. That sounds bad. And it has a hazard symbol, so you need to get rid of it. But if you manage to defeat this when everyone's hands are empty, guess what? Galleria Splendor doesn't do nothing on its when defeated. So you want the fourth player to defeat that when their hand is empty. Or if like all the players play events and you get everybody's hands depleted, then play Gallery of Splendor. So I'm going to teach you a trick that FFG probably doesn't like, but you should use it. So with the Ant-Man card, they've allowed you to overpay for cards and spend resources beyond what you need. So if you're about to defeat this side scheme and you don't want to put something in the collection, let's say you're going to defeat it with four Justice and you've got six cards in your hand, but none of the other cards you can play. Well, why not just spend five resources on four Justice, get them all into your discard pile, then when you trigger the when defeated, there's nothing in your hand. So that last player can kind of do a little bit of gaming overspend resources they might add something to the rrg to take that trick away which would make me very sad but for now we're allowed to overspend on cards and you can take advantage of that and take it to the collector that way so that's my suggestion defeat this side scheme when your hand is empty so that you don't uh, have to deal with that in expert mode so someone suggested we do a market watch sorry that appeared at the top of the screen here a little bit off the screen my aspect ratio must be wrong but I thought I would go through the market and look at three cards each time we go into a scenario that might help you win that scenario. So I'm looking at a three, a four, and a five cost card this time. So take them to the fight. Unit cost three. Look at the top two per player cards of the encounter deck. Discard any number of those cards, then place the rest on the top or bottom of the encounter deck in any order. Draw one card. So on a four player game, you look at eight cards from the top of the encounter deck. Place them in whatever order you want on the top or bottom or put them into the discard pile. And you're not putting them into the discard pile from play. They're like from this nebulous area in your hands. 
So you could look at the top of the deck, say, oh, I found six of the nine minions. I'm just going to put those in the discard pile, or I'm just going to put those in the bottom of the deck so I know they're not getting shuffled back in. That's really powerful. Or if you see a caught off guard coming, you're like, well, I'm just going to make this a boost card so that I don't have to put something into discard. So that is a expert planning card. And this is going to be good against every villain in multiplayer. Even in solo, it lets you decide what your next villain turn is, right? The collector is going to get a boost card. You're going to get an encounter card. So which one's going to be which? You can make that decision. Or if they're both bad, you can just get them out of the way. So that's a pretty cool card. Um, I really like Hyper Thrusters. Exhaust Hyper Thrusters remove one threat from the scheme. If you control the Milano, remove an additional threat from the main scheme. So you're not going to have Milano in this game. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But in solo, this is still like an AoE threat removal. So when those Galactic Artifacts start to build up, you can be working on those turn after turn. This isn't a thwart action. So this gets around uh, patrol on that minion. You can still remove threat from the main scheme. It's not like Crisis. You just can't thwart against it. So it's a sneaky way to get threat removal in on that main scheme, which I like. And I think this is a good card for all four other scenarios in the game. So you'll appreciate having it. And since you know there's going to be a campaign side scheme for each mission, this is always going to have a target if you get it in your opening hand. You're always going to have a side scheme and a main scheme to remove that from. You're going to be happy. Finally, the five unit cost card. I haven't actually bought this one yet, but I'm looking through them. I saw it and I was like, wow, why didn't I buy this with my five units? Um, is Safeguard. Give up the two friendly characters, each tough status card, and draw one card. That card is amazing, right? That's like Doctor Strange's ability. It replenishes itself. It's only two characters instead of five, but this is really going to let you use your allies for blocking and maintain hero form. So zero-cost event for this is just a straight-up winner. I would definitely take this card into the collector. So how do you earn units in campaign mode? You might want to know how you're going to get these units that you spend next time. And this video is going really long. I am sorry, everybody. Um, but how you earn units. So you get one per player. You get up to three, one from the campaign side scheme and up to two from that baboon, 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 baboon headhunter. So that's up to four. You get one additional per player if the collection has one per player or fewer cards in it. So you want to get that down to four in four player or one in solo. And then one for having no threat on the main scheme at the end of the game. That one's really hard to do. Um, you have really have to plan to get that one out. But you could potentially get seven units in this scenario for each player to go upgrade their deck before moving on to scenario three. So I encourage you to try to do that because all the cards in the market are really good. None of them are going to hurt your deck. So it does not, um, it's not a problem for you to spend extra units. All right. So in conclusion, the Collector infiltrates the museum. He is a jerk. You are going to want to punch him. You are not going to want to play him over and over again right away because he is going to be annoying. But once you've figured his scenario out, it can be really fun and really easily gamed. So things you want to do, things you want to collect in your deck. You want to have lots of Confuse and Stun. You want to have lots of high health allies and ways to use those allies once they've expended their health without discarding them. You want to tank minions and side schemes instead of defeating them. You want to leave things on the board, which is a very strange headspace to be in. And you want to remove a card from the collection every single turn you can. It is worth it to have that extra wiggle room for when an emergency does happen and you have to put three cards into the collection to have that spare space in the collection. So what are some things that you wouldn't want to collect in your TCG land? What are some things that are just coaster cards you'd set your drink on? Um, so you don't want to chump block. I mean, you can if it's truly essential, but it has to be like game losing essential for you to be chump blocking or the collection has to be completely empty. Um, you don't want to fully expend those uses cards. So if you're putting uses cards in your deck, just plan on don't using all the tokens. You're only going to get two damage prevention out of energy barrier and things like that. And that can be really painful to characters like Rocket. Um, and you're going to really struggle with other things that discard, like Black Widow's um, preparations, things like that. Uh, don't. Don't forget to empty the collection every turn. I put this under do's and don'ts because it's literally that important that every chance you get, you remove a card from the collection. It's just, it's essential. You need to do it. Um, and then don't flip to Collector 3 in expert mode if you are unprepared. Let's say you're one threat away and you're like, well, I got 18 damage in my hand. I can take care of this guy. He's going to put up the top card of your deck in the collection and thwart you out. So you need to get the threat low, get the collection low, get a bunch of damage in your hand, then flip the collector. So when the stars align, you're able to bingo bango win right there. So 
What are your favorite tricks and tips against the collector infiltrate the museum? I highly recommend you check out the Hall of Heroes guide as well. They have a written guide. I'm going to put it in the comment or in the description below because I think it's a great read. It's only a couple paragraphs talking about the collector. You didn't have to listen to me drone for 34 minutes, um, but you'll get a lot of good insight there. And again, big shout out to Hall of Heroes. They have all these cards scanned in so that I can put these awesome pictures into a presentation for you all to learn about the collector. Um, and this would not be possible without all the hard work that Mag does at Hall of Heroes. So big shout out to them again. Again, leave comments below. Let people know what you're struggling with with the collector and what you do if you are having success against the collector. So as a community, we can figure out this sort of puzzle box that is Scenario 2 of Galaxy's Most Wanted. I'm going to play a bunch of Scenario 3 next and get primed up and ready to do that encounter guide. It's going to take a couple more days, but hopefully we'll get that one up here um, probably by the end of the weekend or Monday. So thanks for tuning in and hope you guys have a great weekend.